All right, Dr. Stephen Cervantes, how's it going today? I am well. I'm glad to be here, and thank you. Yeah. We're going to talk. Yes, and you know what? I'm kind of excited about this particular session because, you know, I um, uh, I do these uh, grace-based recovery online study groups for men, these eight-week sessions, and okay. then every guy that's come through those, then once a month we have uh, an alumni meeting. Okay. So any guy that comes through that and, and we have these meetings, and we'll always have a, you know, maybe 20 minutes of that time, I'll be sharing a particular topic, right? And so what I do, though, is when I give them the reminder of the meeting, I'll, I'll ask for suggestions. Like, hey, what do you guys want to talk about? You know, I don't want to just assume. Right. Um, and so one of the ones that had just come back recently was saying, um, you know, one aspect was, hey, can we talk about dealing with shame and guilt? And then, But the other suggestion was, Hey, can we talk more about like emotional growth skills? Mm. So I thought, hey, we're going to be talking <laughs> about an emotional men's emotional self awareness test, and so I'm I'm looking forward to the conversation today because this has all come straight out of the mind of uh, <laughs> Doctor Cervantes over here. So you want to take it away and tell us where we're going? So that's too funny. I'm I'm. You know, I'm reading books and material listening, and some guy makes a reference to a self-awareness test. And we talk about, look, you have to be self-aware really to engage mm-hmm. well and be successful in life. You have to know your strengths and weaknesses. Self-awareness test, I didn't know they had a self-awareness test. So I Google, and there's two or three companies that are putting together self-awareness tests, or put them together. But I was too lazy to go read one or buy it. So I said, I'm going to make up my own self-awareness test. Because I I can guess pretty close. I have no idea what their tests look like. But you're going to see my test. Well, and you've been working with men long enough and been doing this long enough. I think you you know what to look for. Absolutely. So I decided it's going to be 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, up to 100. Percent. Percent. So you could figure out sort of where you are in a fun sort of way, but with a little truth to it. Now, the key to this is this is about emotional self-awareness, right? So yes. we're, in, we're in that lane. That's important to, to understand. Good, good. All about emotions and emotional language and emotional awareness and with you, what you pay attention to emotionally. So I think that's important, and I want to maybe even uh, define that a little bit more. Here's the reason why. So just recently, um, you know, I've, I've been leading a Tuesday night group at my church for, for years. Mm-hmm. And Stephen, I just can't tell you how many times I've had, you know, we're having a discussion. I'm trying to get them involved in a topic. And so we were, we were addressing the aspect of how so much of pornography is actually driven by a violence and oppression over women. Mm. And that then trains us to have a violent, oppressive attitude towards women. And so I said, so we were talking about this, and I said, guys, listen, because everybody was starting to give their opinions and their thoughts about culture and their thoughts about this and blah, blah, blah. And I said, "Let's, let's pause for a second. I said, how, let's just assume this is true, that pornography is all about violence and oppression over women. I said, how does that make you feel? Stephen, I can't tell you how hard it was to get guys to actually respond with an emotion. Everybody then just gave their opinion, or everybody then gave you know their thought on this, or yeah. this is how I would change that. And I'm going, what do you? How does that make you feel? Yeah. Imagine your sister. Imagine like yes. And it took a long time to get any one guy to say. I'm sad about that. Yeah, that's perfect. Or I'm angry about that. Yeah. But so I think before we even dive into the assessment, it's important for guys to understand the difference between thoughts and emotions. Mm. Or like my opinion and my feelings, because I think that's a challenge for a lot of men just to know. (laughs) And we need to do a talk about emotions because I did a little training and it's like, Nobody knows how to define emotions. Mm -hmm. And so they tried to write a paragraph, and I think they came up with like 300 words (laughs) to describe what emotions were. Wow, that's... Because just think about the topic. It's a body sensation. It's a thought. 
and it's a, a language and we're trying to use words to express things that we all experience differently. Like uh, my yeah. sadness would be different than your sadness. And so it's a very vague topic and it's hard. It's like you know it when you when you have one in your hands or something, but, but to describe it. And I think that would be a great conversation. I'm gonna make a note here that we should do one because it would be funny and insightful. One of the guys that uh, they, they first decided what emotions are. So, so they said emotions are facial expressions. So if your lip, mouth turns down, right. you'll be sad. Uh, if your yeah. mouth turns up, if your eyes are bright and alert, you must, you know, so there's five or six emotions because that's what your face shows. Mm -hmm. Right, then they go on and, and they're, they, they start to play off of this, right? Grief and sadness are like cousins, right? And so there's variations of angry and irritable. There's all these variations of these words. Anxiety, fear, stress are all yes. kind of the same camp, So we can right? start yeah. with six because facial, yeah. then we can go to 27. Well, it's kind of like the emotion wheel. Yes, right? yeah, that kind exactly. Of and now they're saying AI is making up new emotions. Oh, my so this whole thing is expanding, and it's 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 yeah, a loose and I don't thing. want and I don't want to try to uh, make any of our our listeners, especially men, think that you can draw a totally hard line between a thought and an emotion. Yeah. But what I am saying is, let's just say for the the sake of understanding where we're going with this yeah. self awareness <clears throat> test is let's just say this is more below your neck than above your <laughs> neck. Like, it's got to be down in your guts kind of a thing, right? Yeah, yeah, an experiential thing that yeah. goes on in your body. That's emotions and their descriptors. Um, and I think as I go down the yeah, test, yeah. well, it'll, it'll make more sense. So, so remember, 0, 10, 20, 30, we're going to go down that list. We're going to start at 0, we're going to get to 100, what I think 100% of emotional awareness is. So 0... You ask a man, what do you think about feelings? And they say, feelings are dumb. I don't have any feelings. Feelings get in the way. B why feel? Yeah. That's a zero. Yeah, that's completely unaware. That's yeah. completely, oh, you know, interestingly, or maybe even ironically, is that's probably somebody that they are, uh, they are emotionally numb. Yes. Which in itself is an emotion. Right. Yes. Right. It's a it's a, a sense of shut down, if you will. So, what's the ten percent? If zero is emotions are dumb, then what's ten percent? Well, ten percent is I acknowledge I have feelings, but I acknowledge them logically. Yeah. I have feelings. Yes, it's logical. Everybody has feelings, and I have feelings too. That's you get ten percent on your test if that's your answer. So I think when I was uh, operating more in this ten percent range, I would be one of those guys that would say, um, "Oh yeah, I acknowledge. I mean, I, I acknowledge I get angry, and then I'd immediately go into, but you know, I realize that I got to respond to my anger in this way and that way, and I need to make sure that you know I'm all uh, logic. You know, don't don't yeah. go to bed angry because that's what the Bible says and all this kind of." So everything would go to like a solution or to some type of teaching on it. Rather, but that's all logic and language. Yeah. It's not experiential. In other words, I could cognitively yep. recognize that, oh, yeah, I feel emotions. Good. So that's... But that's where it ended. Ten percent. cognitively. I yeah. have feelings. I know I do. Can't, don't express them well. And so then what's 20%? You only get 20%. Do you have emotions... Yes, I get angry. Mm -hmm. I get angry. I get upset, irritable. That's 20%. Because you know how easy it is. Everybody gets upset. Everybody gets angry. Right. How deep do you have to be to say, to throw a fit when you're two years old, going, I want it, I want it, give it to me because I want it. Well, and also, especially for men, this is mm -hmm. what I've seen over the years, is that uh, any and every emotion easily funnels into anger. Oh, so in other words, like he may actually be sad or disappointed or some other nuance. He might even be right. afraid, but rather than actually saying, hey, I'm scared, he's like, ah, 
You know, he yes. gets mad. Yes. Almost like mad that he's afraid. <laughs> well, and, and a so, lot of anger comes from disappointment. Right. And if you want to be better at anger, be better at managing your disappointment, mm-hmm. which is a greater level of awareness than I'm angry. Yeah. And just so you know, statistically, the average American is going to experience 20 disappointments every day. Mm. So this is very important. That's to, why to why understand. better practice dis- disappointment. That's you're right. It's and why they go to anger. If they don't get resolved at the disappointment level, they're going to anger. It's why one of the things that you taught me years ago that I had never thought about was that grieving needs to be a discipline, not just a mm. you know singular event. Right. Because like, how do you manage disappointment? Yeah. You grieve. You have to grieve those things out. Beautiful. So. You're getting smarter. Did you know hey, that man, over time? I just, I just keep following you. <laughs> so you want to get a thirty percent right. Feelings are dumb, zero. I acknowledge logically, I have feelings. 10%, good, good, they exist. Uh, 20%, I have anger, yes, 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 yes. 30%, okay, 30% means you know the basic emotions. Mad, sad, glad. Mm -hmm. Mad, sad, glad, right? Very basic. I'm mad, oh, I'm sad. Yay, I'm glad. Yeah, and what I'm noticing here at 30% is at least at 30% you realize there are distinctive differences between at least these three emotions. Right. Right? Mad is not sad. Sad is not glad. You know, so um, you're realizing, oh, there are, I have different feelings. Yeah, this is interesting because now we're trying to define emotion. We've got three labels, mad, sad, and glad. And we put words on something you can't put your hand on emotions, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. But I have this sensation in my body that, yay, we scored, we won, yay. Oh, that's glad, you know? Mm-hmm. And then you can play off that word, lots of variations. But those are the three basic ones. And guess what your score is? 30%. Mad, sad, <laughs> glad, yay. So you want to get to 40%? I get triggered and then I lose control. So when I come home and I want the floor in the living room clean and all the toys are there and I didn't get what I wanted, I get triggered because I don't like messes. Then I raise my voice and I start going, well, who's gonna clean up this mess? And so I'm realizing that an event can trigger me to act a certain way. Mm-hmm. That's 40%. Yeah, and keep it in mind, this is a self-awareness test, right? Yes. So what this is saying is if you're at 40%, if you can actually recognize in yourself the connection between a trigger and your emotional response. Nice. That's the that's the awareness, right? And you went up 10% now, from mad, sad, glad. Here's mad, the trigger. The reason I want to say that is because, guess what? Um, those that are at 0%, guess what? They have triggers and they have an emotional response. <laughs> it's true. But they're not aware of that, they're right? Not, that's exactly so I just want right. to help you understand how these percentages work. You're saying, I actually, I have a cognitive awareness mm-hmm. that when I come home and there's this particular trigger and I respond that way emotionally, I recognize that those things are connected. That's huge. Yeah. If you think about it, it's huge to understand something set me off. Mm-hmm. Because... People say, you did this, but they don't say, wow, when you do that, I feel I this, this way, yeah. and then I act like this, right? There's an event, then my bad behavior, mm-hmm. right? And they try to work on their bad behavior. Don't, don't, don't get mad, don't get mad, don't get mad. Don't. No, deal with your triggering, Yeah. and then the mad will go away and change. Mm-hmm. Good. So that's 40%. 50%. Look, I know I came from a family of origin, and there's a story, and I know the strength and weaknesses of that story. That's 50% to understand you didn't make yourself this way. You shaped yourself this way based upon how you had to survive as a child. Mm-hmm. And so that some somebody said, I had no voice as a child. 
So I knew not to speak. My dad didn't want to hear it. My mother didn't want to hear it. So I had no voice. Another person says, I went to my room. They started to fight. I went to my room. And so what's the pattern? Conflict, I leave. Mm -hmm. Conflict, I lose my voice. Yeah. Now, I think, you know, it may only show as like a 10% difference on the self-awareness test, but this is a huge leap in terms of in terms of self-awareness notice even some of the progression that's going on here there's greater connections being made right okay and this is you know 40 percent was like oh I, I can connect this very particular trigger to this particular you know emotional outcome 50 percent is saying i'm starting to understand the roots oh that's good of these emotional triggers even right like well why do these things like why would coming home and seeing you know toys on the floor just go Yes. Well, maybe I grew up in a home where when my toys were on the floor, dad blew up. Yes. It's like, okay, oh, man, I'm seeing a connection back then because there's a lot of people that um, can come home and see toys on the floor and it has no <laughs> they response, walk right by doesn't bother them, them right. at all. Or they start picking them up or yeah. whatever. So, so this is huge in terms of the increased connections that one is making in their own soul. You know, I, I wrote this. I never talked to anybody about it. And I love the spin, the interpretation, the words you're putting to it, because it makes perfect sense what you're saying. There is a deepening process and a greater awareness. And there are specifics, right? If you see your family story as having shaped you to act this way, boy, that's a huge, even though they only get 10%. It's huge. It's a big step in growth. It's and that's the other thing, too, about this this self-awareness test. I think what we're trying to encourage men in is saying, hey, keep journeying towards 100%. Keep, you know, Absolutely. there's no shame at any part of this. It's more about just are you aware where you are on this journey? So, <clears throat> so that you were shaped. So we're at the 50%, right? If you know your family story, and we got to talk about this in a minute, because... I, I say to some guy, we got to go back to your story. And one guy just broke down crying. He mm -hmm. said, I cannot go back to my story. I've been running for my story. Why would you send me back? Well, remember, when you go back to your story, you never go back as a child. Yeah. You go back as an adult, and the story changes. Mm -hmm. But people that are so scared, they're living out of here trying to live away, and that's the detachment from self, Right. So, so the detachment comes, starts in our story because we're afraid and because, <clears throat> a lot, like, I'm a pleaser, right? Well, why am I a pleaser? Because I want people to like me and they want to keep me around. I don't want to be the odd guy because I'm kind of an odd guy. I have a little ADD. I, I bounce around. I have thoughts. I want to go deep. <laughs> Guys don't want to. It's like I'm an odd guy. Okay, I get it, but I want to be a part of the team. So I'm going to do whatever's pleasing so you'll keep me around, mm -hmm. right? And say, and you said perfectionism. I want to do such a good job that it's all, you know, control. That it can't be criticized, that it can't uh, be, you know. Yeah. And control freaks go, man, if I can control everything, nothing will slip out, right? And I mean, you think about all these worriers are always trying to stay ahead of the game. They're trying to worry to, to make sure they're ahead of problems. Mm -hmm. Everything you're doing is somehow survival and trying to help you fit in. But it's emotional, and it doesn't always work, and it's not the whole picture. Right. Okay. So, so, and one guy said there was no, there was no, nothing traumatic ever happened, you know. Well, but he went on to say, well, Dad was my coach, but he talked to all the other kids. He didn't talk to me. Hmm. It's like what your own dad was yeah, left out. Yeah. He talked, encourage every other kid, ignore me. He'd say some of the other kids, he ignored me. It's like, okay, maybe it wasn't the big, big traumas. But it's pretty traumatic to be ignored by your father. Yeah. You know, then you wonder, what's the matter with me? And we turn on ourselves, right? So if we know those family stories, we know the strengths of our mother and father, and we know the weaknesses of them and their relationship. So that's 50. 60, can you verbalize what your core fear is? Mm -hmm. Everybody has one core fear. That when it gets triggered, then, it, then we get weird and we get stressed. Oh, no, oh, no. Well, you just said yours. I, I've said mine, right? Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people cannot verbalize the one thing that will always trigger them. And mm. they're going to have it their whole life, birth to death. You, it doesn't have to drive you. And it can be quieter. 
but it, it screams when we're kids, and then it, uh, it squawks when we're adults. Well, and it definitely um, uh, is fuel to an addiction, right? Okay. That core fear. Keep going. So the idea of like, oh my, you know, my core fear is related to that perfectionism, right? Oh my goodness, I can never make the mark. I'm never going to measure up. Right. Somebody's going to find the flaw somewhere, right? That's the fear. And right. so the thing is, is guess what? When I am looking at pornography and doing all these other kind of things, oh. I can never bring the secret out now because that is mm. a clear indication oh. that I am not hitting the mark. I am not. So it just drives further and further into that secrecy of like, I could never. So now I better do a better job of presenting my image to you like oh. I'm perfect. I got it all together. You That's know? good. Because the other thing playing that is instead of dealing with that issue, I escape. Right, exactly. In, in porn land, they love me. I wonderful. can't be perfect in Pornland, yeah. Well, no, and I don't even have to look at myself in Pornland. I go to a fantasy where it's all perfection and good and love and no judgment, no criticism, no failing. In fantasy, I get to make up the fantasy. Exactly. It's, my fantasy. it's exactly the way I want right? it to be. Yeah. So I run away from the reality and I get to a place where it just gets better and better and better. But I'm stunted. But it's more and more disconnection, disconnection, disconnection. Right. right? So. <clears throat> so 70 70% is where I know where I hold the stress in my body. So mm. when we're kids and mom's screaming, we get our gut that tenses up. Or, or when, when dad's drinking too much and we get, oh, you know, fear stores somewhere in the upper part of the body. Not always, but 90% of the time. So, so somebody will say, man, I get this pressure on my head or my hands start sweating or my shoulders get tense. So where is it stored in your body? Oh, it's always in my neck, in my shoulders, you know, yeah. Right, and that goes way back, right? Oh, I, yeah, I mean, as it's never can, changed. And yeah. as far as you can remember, oh, yeah. that's where it was held. See, if, if, if that fear hits me, I can immediately feel everything in my neck and shoulders tighten up. So the body knows it's under attack. Mine is in the gut, like a punch to the gut. Like, oh, man, I just got hit in the gut. So when when a tone... A presentation, negativity, uh, unlove, failure, loss, and it's coming at me. My my body knows first, and then I, my brain catches them. Oh, I know what this is. But your body, because we're afraid and it's trying to protect us, get ready, get ready, it's coming. Notice again how in the progression of the self awareness, again we're getting deeper and uh, and greater connection points. We're understanding, right? Mm. So we went from. You know, just being able to acknowledge that I have feelings, just starting to break them down. I have I have different kinds of feelings too. Um, I understand the connection between a trigger and one of my feelings. I also now I'm understanding how my past is related to those mm. those triggerings. I actually now know that I have a core fear, deeper and deeper connections until you realize your body oh, is connected good. to those emotions, right? So hopefully, what you're recognizing in this self awareness is the deeper and deeper connections that your emotions have to your entire system. Oh, that's emotions good. Emotions are not disconnected from our physical experience, right? Good. You're going to be the interpreter when I bring the test <laughs> down and bring you the book explain. That's good. 80%, I accept the assignment to retrain my brain, grow in self-awareness, and learn healthy emotional skills. Now, remember, <clears throat> oh, you make me uncomfortable and I'm gonna to try to get through this and try to survive. But <clears throat> what if you brought your whole brain on? <clears throat> I was talking to a guy <clears throat> and he and and you know his wife said, I need you to change. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna change. Yeah, change, yeah, we've got to change, gotta change. But he never said, I want, I want to grow emotionally. Mm. I want to retrain my mind. I want to bring all the resources to this fight. Now you're at eighty percent when you said, I'm all in. Yeah. I've got to do this. And I think this is important. So here's the thing. What, is, what would even be the point of a test like this if it weren't for the purposes of us maturing, growing, yes, right? Yes. In other words, I think of it this way. There's, there's this one-two punch that God has given to us in, in his word uh, when it's related to transformation, and it's confession and repentance. Mm. You know what confession is? It's just agreeing with what's true. In other words, confession is just saying, okay, here's the closet doors of my life swung open, and this is the reality of what is. Confession doesn't transform your life. But repentance is that idea of saying, I want to change direction. 
I repentance is a saying. Ready. I am I coming before to. and realizing. <clears throat> I, I see in confession what is true, mm. and I repent so that I can turn towards what is right. I want to go in the direction that God has for me, and now, so in this way, it's, it's. I kind of like see it that way. You're getting to eighty percent when you say. You know what? I want to go on this personal growth mission of, of becoming more mature in my emotions, of becoming yes. more grown yes. up. And, and and one guy said, well, what do you want me to say? Well, just tell me. what. No, what, what do you want me to say? And so I can say it so you can shut up. What do you want me to say? I mean, he and I went 20 minutes. I said, whatever you want to say. No, no. What do you? See, he's hiding. Yeah. He wants to get off the hot seat. What do you want so you can leave me alone? It doesn't mean I want to change. It doesn't right. mean I want to do the work. Yeah. But let me say the thing you want so you'll go away and leave me alone. Mm-hmm. That's not a heart that says, I want to and I'm ready. It's kind of like we talked about <clears throat> in an earlier podcast about the, the, the fear that is present in change and transformation, yes, right? Yes, So you hit 80%. Recognize you're going to probably have some fears that come up because you right. go, you know what this journey means? I can't keep doing the things that I've always done before in response to these emotions. I've I've got to get some healing from my family of origin. I've got to I've got to deal with my core fear and learn how to respond in new and different ways. Yeah. There's going to be that's unfamiliar territory. Right. But if I want to. Mm-hmm. See, if my wife wants me to, it can be okay, a duty or an obligation. Yeah, right? and I'll yeah. do it, and then I'll do it for about three weeks, and I'm sick of that mess. <laughs> I don't do it anymore. If you've seen lots of people that do it for a month, yeah, and they go, when she's not looking, I'm back, man. I'm right, not yeah. Because I don't want to. And, I mean, I work with this guy, and, and he's going, what does she want? Okay, I'll do it. What, what, you want me to? Okay. You want me to, oh, you, oh uh, I should be empathetic. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to be empathetic right now because if I'm more empathetic, I, you know, I really want to be empathetic. But it's like, I don't want to change. Right, but tell yeah. me the words to use that sound like good words. Yeah. But but when your heart is all in, this is like the most incredible thing. I like how you get all in. I like how you described it at 8%. It's saying that I accept the assignment to be retrained in these areas. And it's, it's like, a heavenly thing, it too. It is. It's but not, I like the fact that it is that assignment language is like, I'm choosing yes. to grab yes. on to what needs to change. Right? right. And what does the Bible say? Renew, right? Yeah. Always be in renewal of your mind, your heart. Watch your behaviors. Don't be like those guys over there who clean the outside, but don't clean the inside. I can't so, wait to see 90 and 100. <laughs> what do we got here? So 90, I understand myself enough to know I'm emotional, and I'm going to let you be emotional. Mm. And I'm going to stay calm while you're doing your emotional thing. I don't have to fight emotion with emotion. I can get to a mature place and say, hey, you're triggered. Hey, your mm-hmm. core fear's up. Hey, I see your body's tense. Hey, it's okay. I'm going to get some popcorn. I'm going to watch the show because it's okay that you're emotional because yeah. I'm learning to be emotional. And now this each other thing. In the same way that I think there was a huge leap from 40 to 50%, I think this is a gigantic leap from 80 to 90 because mm. what's happening between 80 and 90 is you're going from – so much of what you are able to understand within yourself and now being able to say, I can let another person own all of their emotions in themselves. Yes. Because so many times, I mean, when we're at more of the you know immature stages of emotion, a lot of times we're, we're so intent on just trying to control others <clears throat> or ignore others. Or, yes. you know, or get to the end. One yeah. of those three. Yeah. Ignore, control, or get to the end. And this is, this is like, boy, this is... Like it's at ninety percent, right? This is advanced work. Hey, that's right. Of being able to say, you know, you can, you can have your fit. You can have your. I think you know. You, did you know the Bible even tells us that, um, you know, a person's joy and sorrow is their own. Mm. Meaning, I can be next to you when you're experiencing joy. I can be next to you when you're experiencing sorrow, but I can't experience it for you. Yeah. And if I try to get in there, if I try to control it or ignore yeah. it, I'm like, so can we, you know, live live on the same path, but you can experience your emotion, I can experience my and emotion. And I mean, I get and, triggered either, right? right? Exactly. And you're sad, oh, I got to pick you up. And or, No, if you're sad, I can be sad too. But I can be sad like I know sad. Yeah. I can't be sad like you're sad. My sadness comes from my story. And what people don't know is that they want us to be the same. We can't be the same. No. 
your sadness from your story growing up and how it shows up in your body is different than mine. But, but when I go to sad, when you go to sad, right, then that's our bond. Yeah. If I go to happy and you go to sad, disconnect. Right. Right? So, so number 100. 100% 100 is when the spirit, right, and you are a spirit, right? There's a spirit that lives in this body, the spirit of Stephen, and the emotional st system that Stephen runs work in harmony with the Holy Spirit that's inside me. Mm. So I have the Holy Spirit inside me. I have the spirit that leaves the body when I die. And I have an emotional program that I'm running to try to engage life with. Yeah. And when the emotional program and the spirit of me get in harmony with the Holy Spirit, then everything is working. You know what I love about this? You know, we're told in the scripture that there is a type of fruit that the Holy Spirit wants to produce in us. Mm. And I see that so much in this 100%. It's saying, you know what? I'm bringing my whole self in alignment with that spirit so that love, joy, peace, yes. patience, kindness, self-control, all these oh, things can goodness. begin to grow in me. And there's that's a maturing, right? Yes. There's because a maturing that happens. myself that. and my program meets the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit program, mm -hmm. right? And I say, look, I've kind of put it together, this cobbled together, wired, duct tape, you know, <laughs> mask and tape held together, ball of string, and mm -hmm. to your program, right? I bring mine to yours and... Yeah, this is good. And I can... Well, um, I think this is a, an incredible tool to help men to be able to kind of understand, you know, where you are on this journey and keep in mind it's it's a growth yeah, mission that's right? A, that's right so even as i was looking at this if i were to be honest i'd say man i'm i'm working somewhere in between that 70 to 90 right now yeah in terms of where i feel like most of the work is that's going on in my life right now um especially that, when you had that 80 to 90 jump where it's like can i really let you <laughs> do your emotions the way you want to do your emotions you know so uh, and one of the guys that read this said i went to gateway <laughs> And I'm so happy to say I'm at 80% on the test. And I thought, good job. Because yeah, that's awesome. Gateway is the awakening event that we have, that we host. And then men either get it and go to work, and then you talk to them six months or a year later, and they're going, man, I am moving. I get mm -hmm. this thing. My head's down. I'm working. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be better. I'm gonna end up different. I want the transformational journey yeah. you talk about. I don't want that to happen. Yeah, that's good. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that this is linked in the show notes so that you can actually take a look at this. I'd encourage you, you know, print it off, put it somewhere where you can be saying, "Hey, I want to keep going on this journey. I want to keep going on this growth." And realize that <clears throat> any one of these parts of this self awareness, um, you can be working on it for a while. That's right. And that's okay. Sometimes you got to revisit and circle back, parts, sure. you know, Absolutely. so that's okay. That's good. Let's just stay away from 0%, okay? <laughs> Let's at least be 10% or up. You, you know? have to be, by listening <laughs> to this podcast, you have to at least yeah. be at the 10%. Exactly. Yeah. So that's well, good. Uh, yeah, reach out to us. We want to help you take your next best step on uh, wholeness, towards wholeness in Christ. And we look forward to seeing you back here again next time on the Pure Sex Radio Program. God bless. Man, that went better than I thought it would. That was good. <laughs>